Hi. You know, there's this thing that enthusiasts like to talk about quite a bit when it comes to overclocking and cooling, and that is the balance between noise and cooling efficiency. And this is something that I've always played with a fair amount and trying to find the right balance between acceptable noise on and off gaming or just regular desktop applications and yet having efficient cooling. And so when I bought my um, all-in-one cooler, the H100i from Corsair for my 6700K, actually on my originally for my 4700K, I was um, looking to find, you know, good cooling but um, reasonable sound. And I was very disappointed with the stock fans that Corsair brings to the table for the H100i, which are these guys in front of you, which are spin up to about 2800 RPM, and they are a static pressure fan, the stock static pressure fan with the H100i, and they're incredibly loud. Everybody agrees with these, and almost everybody that cares about noise swaps them out. And that's, uh, you know, a bit of a short sight. Uh, on uh, Corsair side because that costs us extra money uh, in the in the long run for something that should come with half decently um, fans or at least uh, you know not as loud and, and the issue is that of course you can control these um, through your motherboard because they are four pin uh, PWM fans so you can you know have them um, fairly quiet uh, you know when you're not gaming or, or not pushing the CPU um, but if you don't if you just use you know, Corsair link technology these things will boot up at hundred percent right away when you uh, turn on your PC and they are at their full RPM and they are loud and then they won't uh, settle down until the software kicks in for the uh, Corsair link program so you you wait for X number of seconds or what have you uh, longer for in some cases depending on your boot speed and Corsair Link is not the fastest program to start up so yeah it can be really loud unless you have them controlled through your motherboard so uh, yeah I replaced those right away <laughs> so the first thing I did was I went over to the uh, SP120 silent edition fans and they spin up to 1500 or 1450 RPM that's what the box says 1450 and 23 dBA and uh, they are again a good static pressure fan but um, I found that they don't spin up quite to 1450 about 1401 and then 1350 or 1380 on the other one so not getting even my full 1450 but the issue was for me I was still when I do video encoding so that's a very CPU intensive task and it's probably the most CPU intensive task that I do on my PC the temperatures were getting into the 80s and sometimes 90, uh, which is a bit hot for me. And uh, I wanted to see if I could improve that. Now, it's probably okay if you don't do a lot of video encoding. Like, I don't do a lot. It's periodic. But uh, I wouldn't want to sustain that temperature on a, on a long-term basis. And even periodically, I would rather have my temperatures in the lower 80s for this or in the 70s for... Uh, video encoding and certainly with gaming it would be a fair bit lower because um, it doesn't use the CPU as much so um, With that in mind, I, I've, tr I've picked up these nice fans um, These are the Noctua NF F12 industrial PPC um, And this is PPC stands for I believe protected performance cooling and these are relatively recent I think they're maybe a year old now Maybe even two years old, but um, I haven't seen a lot of reviews of them and compared them to the Corsair uh, 120 Silence. Um, I did see some reviews, you know, uh, showing that the noise level of these things only gets up to around 23, 25 decibels at 2,000 RPM. Yeah. So the other thing is these go up to 2,000 RPM versus. Uh, let me get this oriented the right way. 2,000 RPM. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that very well. Uh, versus the um, 1500 or 1450 on the Corsairs. Anyway, they are very well-made fans. They're quite heavy, in fact, 
and people regard this fan as one of the best fans you can put on uh, for static pressure cooling even though they're not technically designed for static pressure they don't have an SP version but they perform very well anyway and the industrial version just means that they're really designed for heavier loads uh, and servers and they have uh, you know anti-dust uh, technology built into them and they have the but they still have the bearing technology um, sso2 bearing technology that the regular nf f12s have and in all other respects are very similar with the nice rubber removable rubber grommets or uh, anti-vibration dampers and um but they just spin up to 2000 and i wanted something this is perfect i wanted a quiet fan that spins up a little bit faster than 1500 rpm and uh, but not so high as 2800 because then you get into, regardless of your fan technology, it still gets louder than I'd like. So 2000 is about the ideal level for me. So I'm, I'm trying this fan. And, uh, but keep in mind, this is not a cheap fan. This is $80, oh sorry, $40 Canadian with taxes in. So $80 for two. And the Corsairs are half that cost for two. Come in a dual pack and they are roughly around, um, actually, they're only about 30 bucks for two i should say so less than half the cost so less uh, about less than the cost of one of these fans so keep that in mind they're they're not uh these are not cheap uh these are relatively cheap but we'll see the performance delta and um i'm hoping that my money was well spent and all reports are that that people uh, are happy with the noctuas the other fans I have in the case, just for reference, are Silent Edition 140s. I replaced the uh, intake fans in the front of my 780T, Corsair 780T, with a Silent uh, Edition. And on the floor of the case, I have a uh, 120 Silent Edition from Corsair as well. And so the, these these guys for the, only go up to 1,200, and these guys only go, they go up to 1,500. And then at the exhausting everything at the back is, I don't have the fan in the case, is a Sickle Flow 120 uh, green LED, uh, 2000 RPM, which is the loudest fan in the case, as you can imagine, but also is a very efficient exhauster for the, the hot air at the top of the case. So that's, I've kept it in and it's a subtle green light, which I like. So let's do some benchmarks comparing the SP120 Silent Edition or Quiet Edition with the uh, Noctuas and I'll do some video encoding and I'll do some um, Tomb Raider benchmark just as a as a graphically intense um, game as well as some CPU usage. So the fans are at, the uh, Noctua fans are at full speed uh, in the BIOS right now just for some noise comparisons. Yeah they're fairly loud. Certainly not as loud as the um, Corsair stock fans, but you do hear them, and uh, yeah, okay, not too bad though, not not really like a jet engine, but they're loud enough. If we go uh, and apply a, my manual, they obviously you don't hear them anymore. I have this manual configuration in my BIOS, so they basically ramp up to full speed at about 75 degrees Celsius. So we might hear them in the testing. And if we go back and hear here, they're really quite quiet right now. And they're spinning at about, um, I think about six, 700 RPM. Yeah, 600 RPM, 632, 646, so that's pretty good. There's not much difference between the two fans. Okay, we'll keep that my custom profile. What I use to record thermal temperatures, fan speeds, overclocks, voltages, everything is uh, HWIN FO64 version 5.32 and uh, just to note that I run my overclock all the time. It's 4.6 manual voltage of 1.35 in the BIOS. It looks here it's about 
four, let's call it, um, or a little lower on average according to this monitoring software. So um, one thing to note that is during the idle temperatures, I will report that it's already running at 4.6 all the time and that there's about 30% utilization while recording of, of the CPU while recording this video. And then I'll give you some uh, average minimum and maximum temperatures and the average I'll report will be the average of the four cores, average of the average of the four cores, so a grand average of the temperature um, for four cores and then the minimum and maximum temperatures observed during the, the benchmark. And then I'll also uh, report the fan speech which can be found down at the bottom uh, for my Z170 Deluxe um, motherboard. And um, I'll give you again average during the test reported using this software, not what's re uh, reported on the box of the fan, as well as the maximum fan uh, speed that the uh, during the test. Okay, so that's just a little bit of information before I give you the table of results. Okay, so we'll run Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Just to note that I do overclock my EVGA 980SCs uh, at about 100 on the core clock and 50 on the memory. Not a huge overclock, but they're already pushing up um, during the boost clock. They get up to about 1450 already, so that's pretty good. They get fairly warm, but I have... Um, the fan curves uh, adjusted to keep them relatively cool so the fans are kind of loud at times but generally don't disturb me during the games anyway let's see how that uh, affects the temperatures okay so what do the results tell us uh, both for the thermals and the fan speeds um, well if we look at the Corsair um, SP120s in various situations idle encoding and the Tomb Raider benchmark versus the Noctua's in the same scenarios uh, we can generally see that the fans are spinning a little bit more in most ca in in the intensive tasks than the um, Corsairs uh, in, in fact there's a quite a, you know about a hundred rpm difference here there is about 200 rpm difference when we're doing the encoding with the Noctua and the temperature delta of the intensive tasks between the two is not much 62 versus 64 the minimums five degrees, the maximum two degrees. So, and then with the Tomb Raider benchmark, seven degrees here, that's that's substantial. Um, only one degree difference there and about three degree difference there for the, the maximum temperatures. So um, again, the maximum temperatures are not sustained for very long. So the average is really what we're looking for here. So a couple of degrees improvement in CPU intensive tasks, better improvement in gaming, and average is again, uh, sorry, idle is about three uh, degrees on the average with some, uh, again, a, a couple of degrees difference between the min and max is at idle. So overall, I think it can be said that um, you get a couple of degrees uh, different improved cooling with a slightly lower RPM uh, on the fan. And what can we conclude from that then? Well, I would say that the uh, Noctua does cool the H100i more efficiently than the SP120s, generally at lower speeds in CPU intensive tasks and gaming, but only by a couple of degrees on average uh, and in the min-maxes too. So not a huge performance increase, but some. But here's an important point, a more aggressive fan curve could be used to improve the cooling with the NFF12s because with the CF, uh, sorry, the SP120s, I was uh, often at the max um, RPM um, and couldn't go any uh, any faster or cool. And I can go up to 2000, it's rather noisy, but uh, I could do that if I wanted to. I, in the, at the bottom of the, at the end of the day, bottom of the bucket if you want, either fan is good enough for cooling the H100i in most tasks. I think the Noctua offers more headroom for very intensive tasks like video encoding. So keep that in mind if you do do video encoding. It is one of the most intensive tasks uh, on the CPU. If you're just gaming and regular desktop usage, I wouldn't bother. Uh, I would the SP120s are are great fans, really, um, and they'll do just fine. And they're quite quiet, uh, very quiet. And really, um, the uh, the Noctua's I bought for the CPU intensive tasks, uh, video encoding tasks. In the end, it's an expensive upgrade, uh, upgrade for marginal performance, um, 
So yeah, only do this uh, if you really need to for uh, more continuous video encoding applications or other CPU intensive applications. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, in the end, rather lengthy comparison, but I hope it was useful for you. If you have any comments, please leave them, and I will endeavor to answer them. Thanks very much.